This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. This last week, I had the opportunity to sit down and have a in-depth conversation with private investigator Thomas Brennan. Tom is the private investigator that's been hired by the parents of Ellen Greenberg, Joshua and Sandy Greenberg, as they search for justice and answers in the death of their daughter. A death that was quite clearly a homicide, considering she was stabbed 20 times. Several of those stab wounds, fatal blows, which would make it a physical impossibility for her to continue stabbing herself up to 20 times. The problem with this is her death has been labeled a suicide by the Philadelphia Police Department. A department which refuses to investigate the death further and refuses to change the cause of death to homicide, which it rightfully should be. Why is that? Why is it so difficult And why are so many refusing to speak the truth about the death of Ellen Greenberg? We discuss all of that and more in this five-part series, our conversation with Thomas Brennan, private investigator, into the death of Ellen Greenberg. New episodes every day this week, Monday through Friday, here on the podcast. Thomas, in our last piece of the conversation, we were talking about the police work, about the investigation or lack thereof into what clearly was a murder scene. Is this something that is truly nefarious or could other circumstances be at play here? There was a horrible nor'easter going on at that moment in time. Was it a difficulty of getting people from point A to point B? Uh, or, or is something else uh, at play here preventing the investigation from even getting off the ground? Uh, I don't know, because according to that, mem- that, that uh, report that I told you about, mm-hmm. according to that report, the fiancé was taken into... Police, uh, you know, police district headquarters in Philadelphia to be interviewed. Mm-hmm. We have never been allowed to see any police reports. Okay, mm-hmm. so I don't know what was said. I don't know who was there. You know, so I I can't tell you any of that. Okay. Yeah. You know, I've heard a lot of rumors that he was represented by counsel. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I I just don't know. I just don't. Know. Uh, um, and um, uh, uh, you know, it, when you take a look at that, the scene itself. Mm-hmm. Okay, as soon as you walk, as soon as you go into the apartment, and you see the victim lying, you know, propped up in this corner in the kitchen on the floor. Immediately, look. You take a look at that, and it's. Whoa, wait just a minute. Mm-hmm. Okay, just a minute. You know, and, and then you see dried and coagulated blood, you know. You know, that should be uh running, you know, the way the, the way the victim is positioned, it should be running vertically. Mm-hmm. Instead it's running horizontally to the ear. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you take a look at that and then um, you, you, you do things like you take a listen to the 911 call yeah. and you hear the fiance telling everyone that she's on her back. Well, in the photograph, she's not on her back. She's sitting up. That's an inconsistency. Okay. Um, you know, and, and, and um, you know, I, I, because, I mean, Philadelphia has, Philadelphia Police Department, uh, District Attorney's Office, Medical Examiner's Office, they are, you know, 
all, all three entities completely refused to do anything, you know, uh, cooperate with us at all. Yeah. At all. And, you know, and then, uh, Tony, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Even, even like with, uh, okay. You talk about, uh, Dr. Galino, Dr. Galino was the medical examiner for the Philadelphia, uh, medical examiner's office. Okay. Mm-hmm. He sits resigned. But anyway, when I first got involved in this, the first thing I did was contact him. Sure. Okay. Now, you have parents who believe their daughter was killed and didn't commit suicide. Mm-hmm. I call him and he, you know, and he says, I say, well, I, uh, Dr. Galino, I'd like to interview Dr. Osborne. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's the he's the doctor that did the, the autopsy. Okay, Doctor Galino says no. Why is that? Okay, so about a year goes by, and you know I'm doing some other things with the, on the case, and I contact uh, Doctor Wayne Ross. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I know Doctor Wayne Ross is a is a court certified a court certified expert in stab wounds. Okay. So I, I want him to take a look at this case. So I give it to him. I, I give everything that I have to him. He takes a look at it, comes back to me and says, hey, Tom, you're right. This is a homicide. There's no way in hell this is a, a suicide. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. Um, so I called Dr. Osborne. I, fur- I, fur- you know, I emailed him copies of Dr. Wayne Ross's report. And he, 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 uh, and I called him and he said, well, since, um, Dr. Ross and Dr. Osborne are medical professionals, I'll allow them, I'll, I'll allow, you know, Dr. Ross to speak with Dr. Osborne. I said, okay. 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 So that, that conference call, okay, took place in the office of the Dauphin County coroner. Mm-hmm. Here in Hattiesburg, okay. There were the, the people present were Dr. Wayne Ross, the Dauphin County Coroner, and myself. Mm-hmm. So, Dr. Ross interviewed Dr. Osborne on the phone, and he got finished asking him questions. And Dr. Osborne, he wasn't happy with the way Dr. Osborne was answering his questions. He, he stopped talking to Dr. Osborne, and I started talking to him and asking him questions. I said, Dr. Osborne, I said, right when we were finishing up our conversation, I said, Dr. Osborne, can you tell me why you changed the cause and manner of death from homicide to suicide? Mm-hmm. Okay. And these, you know, what his, his response is in, you know, I mean, it's burnt on my brain. Okay. Yeah, this is the question everyone wants to know the answer to. Yeah, he responded with, okay, I did it at the insistence of the police. Okay. And I said, can you tell me who they are? I said, did they have a degree in pathology? I said, do any of, any of the officers that you talked to have a degree in pathology? And with that, the call ended, okay? Mm-hmm. And now Dr. Osborne is in Florida. Um, I don't know if anyone has had the chance to read the de- depositions of Dr. Galino and Dr. Osborne. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know why, but Dr. Osborne and Dr. Galino, when, when uh, counsel for the Greenberg, Joe Pedraza, mm-hmm. Joseph Pedraza, when he deposed both of those individuals, if you read their de- read their deposition, the transcript of their depositions, yeah, Mr. Pedraza interviews Dr. Osborne and Dr. Galino regarding Dr. Galino's performance. Okay, uh huh. They say in their depositions, you know, they're 
there were never any problems, no problems at all. Okay, none of whatsoever. Yeah. Tony, I have three memos signed by the deputy, okay, medical examiner, mm -hmm. Dr. Gary Collins, who is now the medical examiner for the state of Delaware. Three memos mm -hmm. criticizing Dr. Osborne for his performance. Three different memos. <laughs> now you have two medical professionals that lied under oath. Sure. They committed perjury. Yeah. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. There's more to come in my conversation with Thomas Brennan, private investigator into the murder of Ellen Greenberg. New segments playing Monday through Friday this week on the podcast. Be sure to press subscribe so you don't miss any of this very intriguing story. Stay with us. Thank you.